Welcome back to On the Ball, the uh, Sports and Society podcast uh, from Vanderbilt. My name is Andrew Marinus. I am really thrilled to have Serena Samuel uh, with us today, who is coming off the experience of winning a national championship. And I can't imagine anything more exciting for a collegiate athlete than to be able to say that they're a national championship, uh, a national champion. Serena is a member of the club rowing team here uh, at Vanderbilt. She's joining us from her home in uh, Miami Beach, Florida. Serena, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. Now, you just mentioned something before uh, we went on uh, air here that you actually came to Vanderbilt uh, because of the reputation, the strength of or the opportunity of the club rowing team. So tell us a little bit about your your prior experience. Like, when did you start doing this and, and when, what was so attractive about the program here at Vanderbilt? Yeah, so I've been rowing since the summer before seventh grade. Um, so I'm going to my senior year at Vanderbilt. So that'll be 10 years of rowing by the time I graduate, which is crazy. Um, and I rowed for Miami Beach Rowing Club in high school. It's a very competitive um, club team for juniors. Um, and when I was going through the recruitment process and talking to collegiate coaches, um, I spoke with the head coach of Vanderbilt's team, John Miller. Um, and something that he mentioned to me was, you know, well, the the biggest thing that was most attractive to me, I would say, is um, the vision that he had for the program. And so not necessarily where the program had been, but where the program would be going. Um, and I saw, you know, he'd been at the program for at that point, probably nine or 10 years, which is definitely a testament to, you know, the wealth of adoration that he had for the program. Um, and, you know, he told me that in spring of 2023, we'd be taking the women's eight to ACRA, which is our national championship. Um, and, you know, the women's varsity eight is the most competitive event in women's rowing, and it's the testament to the strength of the program. Um, and so that was something that was super exciting to me to see a program that, you know, hadn't raced in eight since 2016. Um, you know, kind of have that that vision and those goals. And and he really, you know, he saw something for the team and wanted to keep growing, keep building. Um, and so that was something that was super exciting to me and something that I really wanted to be a part of. Oh, well, very cool. And I should mention it was the Varsity 8 where you won the uh, national championship. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But uh, just to reiterate, this is a club program. So this is not a scholarship program. When you were in high school and looking at colleges, did you have uh, – other options that you could have pursued that would have come with a scholarship or is that uh, common on your team? Yes, I did. Um, I had a couple other offers at other division one programs. Um, I was quite ready to commit somewhere else um, to another division one program that um, was a great option academically and athletically. Um, but I really enjoyed the vision that John had for the program. I, I came and visited. Um, he got me out on the water with the rest of the women's team. I met Julia Ayer, um, who just graduated this this spring. Um, she toured me around campus, and I had, you know, a bunch of phone calls with a bunch of Vanderbilt rowing alumni who were extremely, extremely welcoming and kind, and um, you know, asking or offering to answer any questions I had, and really just welcoming me into the program before I even committed. Um, and so to see that. Um, support system and the alumni and the women's team um, and again to see that vision for the program that John had um, I was I was sold actually when I visited as soon as I came off the water I ran up to John and I was like I'm coming here like it was <laughs> split second decision so I know every coach loves to hear that so um, yeah. I mean one of the reasons why I was interested in this discussion not only because of the championship is just to explore a little bit about what club sports are all about you know and what they're like um, certainly uh, some advantages, right? That I'm sure that you uh, feel versus your friends who might be on uh, a scholarship program in terms of, I would imagine, you know, opportunities that you have on campus outside of your sport, but maybe some certain disadvantages. I know you're paying to be a part of this team and don't receive some of the other um, sort of support services that, that varsity athletes do. But tell us a little bit about what life is like uh, as a member of the rowing team in terms of the, the commitment that you and your teammates um, have to have uh, to this program to be successful? Right. Um, so we train from the first week of school in August um, until the last week of May. So we're on campus about a month after everyone else is. Um, we train together for majority of the season, six 
um, six times, seven times a week. We'll have six morning practices um, in the fall and in the spring and, and one afternoon practice in the fall and in the spring um, with the coaching staff. Um, and then in the winter, those kind of shift to the afternoons as we shift indoors. Um, we're out on Percy Priest Lake in the fall and in the spring. Um, during those morning practices, we wake up around around 5 a.m. We're leaving campus around 5.20, give or take. Um, so we're just up at 5 and leaving campus at 5.20. Yes, uh, yes. So waking up as late as possible to be yeah. able to get to the pickup spot at 5.20. Um, <laughs> and then we get back to campus right in time for 9 a.m. Um, so it's a couple hours out of the lake, six mornings a week, Monday through Saturday. Um, and then those are, you know, coach led practices. And then the women's team and the men's team as well, get in a ton of work, um, you know, without the coaching staff in the erg room on campus, which is, um, it's a gorgeous room that the university has, uh, lent to us with all the rowing machines in it. Um, it's the second floor of the rec. It has, you know, the record boards up there. It has pictures from all the top finishes. Um, it's really like a, a home on campus. Um, and so we spend a lot of afternoons there getting an extra volume, um, extra steady state on the rowing machines to best prepare us for racing season. Um, so it looks like give or take 20 hours a week. Um, and then we, so we're on the water in the fall and the spring and the winter, we're completely in that, in that erg room, um, mostly because there's a ton of gains that you can make on the rowing machine. Um, also, you know, the weather, we definitely do have days out on the lake that are you know, quite, quite cold, but for vast majority of the winter, we're indoors. Um, and then we also, so that's the fall, the winter, uh, we get back on the water in the spring around, around spring break. Um, we take a spring break training tip trip. Um, the past couple of years, it's been to Natchitoches, Louisiana. Um, so the whole team drives down there and we, we do two a days that week. Um, and then we come back to campus, get back to to the mornings out on Percy Priest. Um, and then once finals end, we shift to two a days um, out on Percy Priest Lake until we go to our national championship at the end of May. Um, so that's what a, a typical season looks like. Um, if you can, like how many students are participating? Is it is mm -hmm. it men and women? Is it representing um some newcomers to the sport or is everyone else uh, like you and they have a background in this, but give us a sense of like who's participating and yeah. how many students are participating. Maybe some of the motivation uh, that, you know, that you're aware of, of, of why folks cho choose to uh, spend their time on this team. Absolutely. So definitely not everyone has experience um, the way that I do. When I came in, I think it was 70% of the team, um, did not have prior rowing experience. So it is a ton of walk-ons. Um, that number could totally be different now. Um, but definitely majority of the team does not have prior rowing experience. Um, I think because it's, you know, one of the disadvantages of being a club team is you can't recruit um, high school athletes like varsity teams can. And so, you know, with a school as selective as ours, even if, you know, we have hundreds of high schoolers that are interested and we do have an interest form um, so we can communicate with those high schoolers and, and we do get hundreds of interested high schoolers every, um, you know, admission cycle. But even if we get 100 that apply with an acceptance rate of six, you get six that get in, maybe three decide to come here. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, that definitely is a, a challenge for our program, but it just means that we we have to, you know, seek athletes elsewhere, which is a lot in on-campus walk-on recruitment. Um, we've seen a lot of success with athletes who um, have not rode before, um, haven't picked up an oar until their freshman year of college. Maybe they were swimmers or runners before, um, soccer players, whatever it is. I think the appeal is, you know, for some of those athletes, they're burnt out of their prior sports. Maybe they have injuries. Um, rowing is a very low impact sport, so it's great for athletes with injuries. Um, or prior injuries. Um, it's a great late start sport. You see a ton of Olympians who just started rowing in college. Um, you know, we have athletes on our team that have gone to world championships and selection camps um, for the national team that, you know, just started rowing in college. Um, and so you can see a lot of success having started late, which is wonderful. Um, and it's also just appealing in terms of, it's really fun. 
Um, <laughs> and it's amazing to be a part of a group of like-minded individuals that are, you know, waking up every day with the intention of becoming the best version of themselves, um, not just for themselves, but for the sake of the team. Um, and so it gives, it makes Vanderbilt feel smaller. Um, it, it gives you, you know, a sense of purpose that, you know, you're a part of something bigger than yourself when you're a part of this program. Um, and so, you know, definitely a ton of athletes with no prior experience. Um, and it's, it's been a lot of fun to, to see them fall in love with a sport that, you know, I've been in love with for nine, 10 years now. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned that it's, you know, it can be appealing to athletes who have been injured or picking it up later in their uh, life, but that doesn't mean it's easy, you know, and you're waking up early, you're, you're practicing six or seven days a week. Uh, I'm sure you're exhausted after some of these workouts and then straight to class. Um, what do you love about it? Ooh, everything. <laughs> um, I think the biggest thing I love is, is my team. Like everything is, is for my team. Um, and the coaching staff, I think the trust that we have in each other is unmatched. You can't really get it anywhere else. Um, you know, yes, there are times where you're exhausted. Yes. There are times where it becomes overwhelming. Um, but everyone else is doing it too. And you're doing it together. Um, and there's a reason that you're doing it right. Like we're, we know what we're trying to accomplish and we know what it takes to get there. Um, and truthfully, as much as it's a lot, oftentimes I feel like we're not doing enough. Um, like, you know, we can be practicing twice a day, getting in, you know, lots of volume. Um, and, and even if I'm exhausted, even if I, you know, feel like we're doing a lot, I still feel like I wish there was more that we could be doing because at the end of the day, like when you line up for a national championship, you want to feel as confident as possible and confidence comes with preparation and confidence comes with that hard work and those early mornings and, and whatnot. And so really if, if there was more we could be doing, we'd all be happy to do it. Um, and it, it's the fact that you're doing it together. It's um, I love the, the camaraderie. I love the teamwork. I love the fact that I'm constantly learning new things about the sport, even though I'm nine, 10 years in, um, I love, you know, the feeling of kind of like that balance between pushing each other and working together. Um, you know, for example, in terms of the women's varsity eight, like we have, I'm not sure exactly how many women we have, but we have more than eight women on the team. Um, and so it's, you know, it's a fight to get into that top boat and, and there's selection processes and, you know, everything you're doing at practice is, is a seat race essentially to get into that top, top boat. Um, and so you're competing against your teammates, but at the same time, when you're in the same boat as them, you know, you are one and you have to be one in order to move the boat. Um, and so finding that balance between competition and working together is, is really special and, and finding a team that, you know, pushes each other and, and wants each of your, you want each of your teammates to be as fast as they can be. Um, but at the same time, you also want to be as fast as you can be and just, just pushing each other and finding that balance is, is really, really special. Yeah. keys to success i mean for someone that really doesn't know much about the sport i would imagine strength and stamina are important but like what else and what are the little things that people might not know that uh really are required to be good in your sport um you have to have a sense of hunger and a sense of drive and the sense of like grit almost, I think, of, of pushing yourself and pushing yourself past what you think your limits are. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, it's, it takes, it takes believing in yourself, but also you have a team of athletes and coaches that believe in you when you, in those moments that you don't believe in yourself. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to have that innately, but you do have to have a sense of confidence and, and this ability to push past limits that you, that you thought you had. Um, and just believing in things that you didn't necessarily think was possible. Like, I think, you know, coming into my freshman year, seeing a team that was just coming off of COVID, seeing, you know, a varsity women's team that didn't even have eight athletes, and then also hearing, okay, in a year, we're going to take the eight to Accra. You know, it's times like those where you're, you're skeptical. It's times like, you know, when you're on the rowing machine and, and, you think maybe I can't do this when you have to kind of push past that and say, Oh wait, I can. 
um, and have this sense of why not? Like, I, I can do this. Um, I think that that's big. I think just you have to want it. Like, you have to have that sense of hunger because it is hard. It is hard to wake up early. It is hard to balance, you know, an academically rigorous um, course schedule. It's it's hard to balance going to sleep super early when as a freshman you see a bunch of people um, going to sleep super late. Um, so it there are definitely sacrifices that you have to make, but frankly, they don't feel like sacrifices. Um, and if for whatever re reason they do, success requires sacrifice and it kind of outweighs the, you know, going to bed late appeal. Um, but you have to have that hunger, that drive, um, that kind of willingness and, and, and want to be the best that you can be for the sake of your team. Now, you know, when I think people are uh, talking about college sports these days and they're thinking about scholarship side of thing, um, issues like the transfer portal or name image likeness are, are top of mind. Um, seems to be all about money. You know, um, when you look at a basketball roster per se, you might not even recognize any of the names because it's a completely different team than the year before. So um, from the club sport side of things, looking over at the scholarship side, are there aspects that you covet and are there aspects that you're like you know i'm actually i'm glad that in club sports we're not dealing with x issue right now there's definitely a couple things that i think we miss out on by not having um that varsity status i think not being able to recruit high school athletes is big i think having to pay for the sport that you love is big um especially when you see a school as um, financially successful as Vanderbilt is. And then you have athletes, um, you know, club sport athletes that have to pay to participate. It's difficult to see. Um, you know, fundraising is a big issue. We have a huge budget for our sport. Um, and majority of those funds have to come from alumni and, and fundraising that we do and fundraising from our, you know, our parents and, and, and whatnot. Um, and we have been successful in that um, arena, I think, because of how successful we've been on the water. We've been able to attract funds from elsewhere and 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 people that love the program want to give back to the program. But at the same time, like, you know, there are years where it feels like we might eventually end up have to operate, having to be operating in the red, um, really not because we're spending money, um, you know, randomly, but because it requires money to travel. It requires money for gas, for launches we need launches in order to practice safely um you know our equipment's expensive our travel costs are expensive and we are limited in how much we can travel because of the funds that we do have or don't have um you know there are races that i strongly believe that we could go out and win um that we don't necessarily have the ability to travel to because of the funds that we don't necessarily have um so i do think that that that's a challenge um i think recognition is a challenge for a non-varsity level sport. Um, I think we've had, we had a very successful season last year um, and really a very successful last two or three years stretch. Um, and there are often times where it feels like most of campus doesn't know that, um, which is okay because that's not why we do it. We do it because we love it. Um, but I do think that, you know, varsity status athletes get a lot more recognition um, when you know you have athletes that are coming in like our team you know silver medal at the national championship last year winning you know having two gold medals from head of the charles over the past three years which is the largest regatta one of the most prestigious regattas if not the most prestigious regatta in the world um so we're doing really incredible awesome things that i'm really proud of um not just on a club level like we're winning events against division one two three varsity level crews that are fully funded um, and so we are a fast program and not a lot of people know that again, it's okay, but it is a, you know, downside of not having that, that varsity status. Um, I do think that there are pros in some senses. Like I think, you know, varsity status athletes have limitations on how many hours a week they can practice. Um, they have limitations on, you know, how they can practice during finals and whatnot. Um, we don't have those limitations. So I think that's a huge benefit that I see. Um, and, you know, I, I'm sure there are others. I, I think, you know, like you mentioned, the the way that 
um, collegiate athletics has become a lot about money and, and scholarships. And, you know, I see a lot of my teammates from high school picking schools based on how much money they're getting and not necessarily based on the team that they love. Um, and so I, I do think there's an advantage there in terms of, you know, everyone on my team is rowing because they love rowing. They love Vanderbilt rowing. They're fully committed to Vanderbilt rowing. Um, and, and they do it because they have that passion, that drive, that hunger that we talked about, not because they're getting paid. And so I think that kind of produces an incredible team culture, um, which is definitely an advantage, but you know, there's like everything, there's pros and cons. And you mentioned to me when we first started talking about this interview that your team is not only performing really well in the water, but in the classroom yes. as well. So tell us about some of the recognition that uh, both the men and the women uh, have received here recently. Absolutely. So we saw, I think, 18 men and women um, be named to the Acker All Academic first and second teams, um, which is, I believe, the most that we've ever had, um, which is something that we're definitely really proud of. Um, it's been awesome to see we had one of the women on my team won, I don't know the name of the award, but some engineering award at the end of the year. Um, and it's been really amazing, amazing to see um, the success in and out of the classroom um, that my teammates have had. We've had athletes named to the Acre All South region team, um, which there's... Uh, like you said, like eight of the 18, 18 spots right, were eight Vanderbilt. Of, exactly. Eight out of 18 spots were Vanderbilt, which is incredible. Last season, we had both of our coaches named to All South, um, you know, like coach of the year. Um, it's a lot of recognition on the national stage over the past couple of years, which has been really, really amazing um, to see. Yeah. Okay. So let's get to the ACRA uh, national championships here. Um, how do you qualify for it, first of all? And what was the mindset of the team? going in was this championship something that I'm sure it was something you sh were shooting for but was was it uh seen as a like a, a real possibility or was this an upset so great question um so we've had a very incredible two-year stretch um however the success that we've seen over the past two years you know has been it wouldn't have been as possible or we would have we wouldn't have been able to be as successful as we were the past two years without having built on the success of the alumni before us, having seen, um, you know, the national championships that they've been able to win in small boats, um, seeing their women's varsity four in 2017 take silver at Accra and then gold in 2018, um, seeing, you know, building off the records that they've set for us in the Urgroom. room. So we've had a, a very amazing foundation from the alumni, uh, but I do think there was a big shift around two, three years ago um, on both the men and women's sides in terms of kind of pushing our ceiling and, and raising our floor. Um, and so while we won, you know, we brought the trophy home on Sunday, but I do think the win was a culmination of, you know, the time, work and, and effort that we've put forth uh, in the, over the past several years. Um, two years ago, we saw a big shift on the women's team in terms of um, team culture, in terms of speed. Um, and frankly, we started having a lot more fun um, I think it went hand in hand, the going fast and, and having fun. Um, we won, we came in second at head of the Charles in the four, which is, again, the, one of the most prestigious regattas in the world. Um, I think that was kind of a wake up call of, oh, wait, we're fast. Mm -hmm. um, however, that was the four. And I think the four is pretty different ball game than the women's eight. Um, you know, again, women's eight, most competitive event, women's rowing. It's a testament to the depth of the program um, to have eight fast women means you have to have you know 16 fast women because you've got to have that selection within the team and the competition within the team to really create a strong um a strong women's eight so we knew we had a fast four um and then we went out of the hooch which is the largest uh not the largest but one of the most prestigious southeastern fall regattas um and we won the eight there and i think that was another wake-up call of oh wait like maybe we can do this like there's something here um and you know we, I'm very impressed with how we took that success early in that fall um, and really built off of it and really said, okay, what can we do with this? Um, and so last season we won our conference championship, which is the um, Southern Intercollegiate Rowing Association Conference Championship. We went up to Indiana, we won their conference championship in the Midwest. Um, and then we went to Akron National Championship and took silver. So it was a very successful season, um, but I'm very, very impressed with how we approached this year after having a very successful year last year. So I think 
you know, last year was kind of this, there was this novelty to being fast. Um, you know, we weren't ranked in the women's varsity eight and we won our conference championship. And then all of a sudden we were, you know, in the coach acro coaches poll, we were ranked first, most likely to win um, the national championship. And all of a sudden we had this recognition. We kind of had this, um, you know, all of a sudden people knew who we were and they didn't know before, but at the same time we were still underdogs um, last year. And I think this year was different this year. We went in knowing we were fast and knowing we were capable of a lot of things. Um, but at the same time, we had a, you know, we wanted to make sure that we didn't succumb to that pressure of, oh, everyone knows we're fast. And we also wanted to make sure we weren't limiting ourselves to just as successful of a season as we had the year prior. Um, and I think we did a really good job this fall talking about what's next for the program, right? Like we talked about the next tier, future tier of competition. We talked about, okay, we were really successful against club programs last season. Let's race division one teams this year. Let's put ourselves in a position to make sure that when we go to Accra, we're not, you know, I think, so what happened last year, I think is we went to Accra and we'd never seen a crew faster than us um, up until that moment. This year, we wanted to make sure that didn't happen. Um, and I think, you know, John did a really, really incredible job giving us opportunities to race division programs and varsity status programs before we got to Accra. Um, you know, we, we scrimmaged Fordham, we scrimmaged University of Tennessee, um, we in at our conference championship instead of racing the club division we raced the open division we raced kansas state we raced um jacksonville we raced louisville we raced fully funded varsity status programs and we put ourselves in position frankly to lose a little bit which mm -hmm. is scary especially coming off of a season the year prior where you know up until nationals we were mostly undefeated um but i you know i i told john and i told my team i'd much rather lose early on in the season to you know a couple fully funded varsity programs and then put ourselves in a position to be the fastest club program at Accra because at the end of the day no one cares you know eh, not no one cares but it's not that big of a deal who wins the scrimmage in March but everyone knows who wins the national championship at the end of May yeah. um and so you know I think we got a lot of confidence from racing varsity level crews we got a lot of confidence from beating a ton of varsity level crews um, we didn't beat all of them, but I do think there's a day that we can. Um, and, you know, we put ourselves in a position to be confident going into the national championship, but at the same time, have that sense of urgency and know what it's like to lose, know what it's like to come home on the other end of that, you know, 0.28 seconds of, you know, knowing that you, you could have had it. Um, and so it was, it was an exciting year. It was a challenging year. Um, but we put ourselves in the best position to be successful. And I'm very, very grateful that, you know, I'm grateful for my teammates, grateful for the coaching staff, grateful for, you know, John always says, he's like, we're going to put ourselves, you know, we're going to race to our potential. We're going to, you know, row our best race, race our best race and see if it's good enough. And I'm very grateful that this Sunday it happened to have been good enough. And you didn't just throw out 0.28 seconds randomly either. That was the winning margin. Um, uh, over a boat from Purdue. So tell us more about uh, that championship race. And is it a mix of uh, varsity programs and club programs? Is it just club? Um, and for those of us who don't know what 0.28 seconds translates to in terms of distance, like how close was this, this final? Um, in terms of 0.28 seconds, I will tell you, it's close enough that no one knew if we won when we crossed the line. Um, at least from from the spectator side, they had to you know look at a, a photo finish. They call it. Um, we knew we won when we crossed the line. Um, this so Acro Nationals is it is only club programs. Um, the rest of our conference championships includes varsity level programs. Um, we race Mercyhurst. We race like I said, Jacksonville, Louisville, Kansas State. Um, but when it comes to Acro, it is it's entirely club programs. Um, it is kind of a like a sort of like a tournament, I would say where you start out with, you know, time trials and you get to heats um, and then you're, you're seated in the beginning. So we were seated the top program um, going into Acro national, going into the national championship this, this year. Um, and so that gave us the best lane the first day um, we won our heat, got the best lane the next day, won our semifinal, got the best lane the next day. Um, and then it all comes down to that final on, on Sunday afternoon. Um, it's a six boat final. We were racing, uh, Bowdoin, Purdue, Northwestern, uh, I want to say 
University of UC Irvine. Um, and how many was that? Racing, it was a six boat final, mm -hmm. essentially. Okay. Um, we had, you know, Bowden was the, uh, Bowden was the winner last year. They were the ones that, you know, had a very incredible race last year and, and made us just, just miss that, that gold last spring. Um, Purdue, we've seen a couple of times this year. Um, we have a great relationship with a lot of these crews. John has a great relationship with a lot of these coaches. Um, and so it's, you know, it's, it's all business obviously when you're racing, but we, you know, we do have friends here and there at other programs. We see them pretty often. Um, and it was, it was a fun race. We were, we were up off the start, which is kind of a first for our, our team. We, if you, we watched back a lot of our races from last season and the earlier on in the spring, and we have a tendency to be last off the start and then have a faster middle thousand. It's a 2000 meter race. Okay. Um, we were up off the start and, you know, we were up on everyone. And then, you know, Purdue had a, a pretty fast, they had a fast middle thousand. They had a fast sprint. Um, they sprinted, there was usually, so a typical race, we sprint with like 250 meters to go, 300 meters to go, um, 400 meters to go. I felt Purdue pushing on us and, and okay. I knew it was going to come down to that last second. Um, our coxswain, Dylan Cameron, that's the, the girl at the front of the boat that's steering and, and kind of making those, um, race plan calls with 400 left. She was like, we got to go now. Um, okay. with 150 left. She was like, I heard her voice crack sound like she was going to cry. She was like, guys, I need more from you. I think she knew we were, you know, in a position where we might end up where we were last year, um, which I think would have been very devastating given, you know, the fact that we had five seniors in that boat, um, you know, given the fact that we knew what that felt like before. Um, and so she was really pushing us, really making us know that we, we had to go. Mm -hmm. um, and crossing that line was it was very, very awesome to cross that line first to know. What was the um, immediate celebration in the boat like? And then what did you all do afterwards? So we were, we crossed the line. We knew we won. We were slapping the water. We were screaming. We were, I, you don't really think about anything, to be honest, because you're in so much physical pain and like your lungs are burning, your legs are burning. Like you just push yourself, you know, as far as you could go. But at the same time, like you're overwhelmed with emotion. People were crying. Um, it took me about five seconds, but I was crying um, once it hit. And and we were just very, very grateful and proud. And and we pulled into the the medals dock. And you know they called out women, your women's varsity eight Acre national championship champions Vanderbilt. Um, and you know we had our trophy, we had our medals. We were jumping in the water. Um, it's tradition to throw the coxswain in the water if you win nationals. So we threw Dylan in the water. I went up to our coach John, and and one of the assistant coaches whispered in my ear that he didn't have his phone on him. So I pushed John in the water. Um, everyone was cheering. We had like the whole team there. Um, it's a huge regatta, so a ton of spectators cheering. Um, and it was it was a lot of fun. We were, you know very just proud grateful happy over overwhelmed overcome with emotion that's awesome um i may be wrong i mean is there professional rowing like what what is next for uh someone that's you know dedicated so much of their uh life to this if it's not in a boat how do you feel like this experience has prepared you for whatever you do decide uh to do in life hmm. So there's definitely not professional rowing to the extent that there's professional basketball or football, mostly because it's not much of a spectator sport. Um, however, there is world rowing, there's Olympic rowing, and we have a, a couple of alumni that are involved in that. Um, one of my teammates from, two of my teammates actually from this eight, um, one of them raced in China last year, represented the United States um, and, you know, Vanderbilt by association um, mm -hmm. in world university games over there. Um, another one of my teammates is, is going to a national, um, national team, uh, training camp this summer up at Craftsbury. Um, and so there definitely is a next step for, um, collegiate rowers. Um, for me, I do think one day I'd like to coach rowing. I think the sports, the sport has given me so much and, and really developed me into who I am, um, that I'd, I'd love to give back to to youth rowers in that way or, or collegiate rowers 
um, it's definitely set me and, and my entire team up for success outside of outside of the boat. I think, you know, you learn a, a level of time management that you don't really in other sports in terms of, you know, you're going to bed at 8 p.m. in college. Like that's kind of unheard of. Mm -hmm. um, but you learn, you know, you learn how to do homework on the van in the vans on the way to regattas. You learn how to manage your time wisely. Um, you know, you learn how to push yourselves. You learn how to work with other people really well. Um, you learn how to be self accountable and, and hold yourself to a higher standard, but, but also lean on your teammates when you need to, um, you learn how to be a good team player. Um, you know, you, you learn how to listen to, to your coaches and trust your coaches and, and trust your teammates and trust yourself. Um, it really, it sets you up, set, sets you up incredibly for, for life outside of the sport and outside of college. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, well, this has been a fantastic discussion, Serena. It's been great to get to know you on campus. Look forward to uh, seeing you when you're back in Nashville. Congratulations on this championship. You mentioned that uh, the team relies on support. So for those who are interested in supporting uh, your team uh, or just learning more about it, like what's the best way for them to do that? Absolutely. Um, so you can go to Instagram, follow Vanderbilt Rowing. Um, that's pretty good way to stay updated with what we're doing um the you can go on our website also i do believe it's vanderboatrowing.com um you can email vandy rowing at gmail.com that's our head coach john miller um and we yeah we definitely would appreciate anyone and everyone's support um if anyone watching is interested in rowing in college definitely reach out um we love uh you know anyone interested to come and, and check it out it includes men too, and we should mention before we go that the men won uh, two yes. medals at this competition as well. Yes. So uh, before we go, what what, were, what was the story with those two medals that they won? So th those are actually those are huge as well um, because those are the first medals that Vanderbilt men's rowing has ever brought home from a national championship. Um, so men's rowing at the club level is incredibly challenging um, because. So because of Title IX, there are a lot of varsity status women's rowing teams to balance out football funding and whatnot. There are not mm -hmm. a lot of varsity men's rowing teams. And so there are a lot of club men's rowing teams that are really, really fast and much larger than ours, much better funded than ours, um, and, and frankly, much faster than ours. So to medal on the men's side is an incredible feat that we're very, very proud of, very excited to see where the men um how the men can continue to grow and flourish. Um, we saw a silver in the men's quad, uh, men's varsity quad and a silver in the men's freshman four. Um, that men's freshman four also pulled the second fastest time from the varsity four category as well. Um, so they had a very successful, strong performance. Um, and it's it Vanderbilt or men's rowing at the club levels is, is very competitive um, in general. And so we're very excited to see those two medals brought home and, and excited to see where they can go from here. Yeah, it sounds like the, um, I mean, the present is bright, but the future is bright for Vanderbilt rowing uh, as well. So again, Serena, um, enjoy the summer. Uh, see you back in Nashville in the fall, but congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.